Hello and welcome to Inside Story. I'm Kumi Taguchi. Every year in Hong Kong, around 16,000 people suffer from a stroke. Blood supply to the brain is interrupted and neurological damage can be permanent. For many stroke sufferers, paralysis and loss of speech can result, and using a wheelchair is commonplace. What happens to luxuries like travel? Can so-called normal life continue? We take a look at how wheelchairs and travel can mix. My father uh, was the kind of person who is able to fix things. He's very inventive and creative and a real problem solver. Um, so you would find that family and friends would give him a call if they needed an odd job done at their house, a handyman type thing, and he was always willing to help anyone to, to be a real helper and, and a doer. The stroke had happened on the left side of the brain, meaning that it affects the right side of the body. And given the amount of bleeding that there was in the brain, we got a very, very poor prognosis back from the medical staff. Um, basically, we were indica it was indicated that it's most likely he is going to die in the next few days. Um, my father lost everything. If the only way I can describe it is that everything that you know and have learned is taken away in a second. So it's like, I guess, waking up from a slumber and um, your intellect is still there, but you have no way to communicate. You don't know how to do anything. So he had to learn to, to blink, to lick his lips, to touch his nose. Um, and so the occupational therapy that he did was all for a view of getting him to live at home with some level of dignity and some level of quality of life. Not only is there a huge physical loss when you have a massive stroke, but there's a, a psychological and a massive emotional loss as well. Um, for somebody who's in the prime of their life to be, you know, something's changed dramatically overnight, it's terrible. You go through a grieving process of all, a grieving your former self to a certain extent. So a lot of tears, a lot of heartache, a lot of depression, uh, wanting to give up to stop stop trying anymore because every day is a trial and, and an effort. It's a little bit blurred but we're actually on the peak tram, we've squeezed onto the peak tram. My father um, has always had a passion for travel and maybe after the stroke he had considered that he wouldn't it wouldn't be possible for him to travel again and so one way to encourage him to travel and to realize this dream and one of the goals that he had was to go overseas for his 60th birthday which was 10 years after his stroke and so we used travel as an incentive to get him motivated to continue with his occupational therapy um, and um, daily activities and physiotherapy and we really did realize that the, there's nothing stopping us the fact that he's paralyzed lies down the right side of his body and wears his arm in a sling uh, and the fact that he doesn't have communication skills why should this stop him traveling when I'm talking to my able-bodied friends that my parents are coming over and my father's in a wheelchair they're like why is he coming to Hong Kong you can't get around in Hong Kong and I say uh-huh but yes you can <laughs> Well, there is a perception that Hong Kong is all hills and, and, and streets like this, uh, which in certain areas it is, but you have to keep in mind that not everybody needs to go into those areas. A lot of the high streets and very steep streets and, and step footpaths, a lot of them are in uh, residential areas. So if you're coming as a tourist into the city, um, there's many, many accessible areas in Hong Kong that you can, can visit. I came up with the idea to write a book about um, accessibility in Hong Kong and I found that when I was researching for my father's trip there wasn't a lot of um, government department information available that actually was 
current and practical for when you really need to know how to get around. And I'd sort of plan my day by making some hotel appointments where I would visit the disability accessible rooms in the hotels and the other public spaces in the hotel. That I would meet the hotel staff, I'd explain to them about what I was doing with the book and I'd also explain to them that my father's actually in a wheelchair so I am looking at the room really as an idea of if it's somewhere where he can stay. So I've researched over 100 hotels and I have a checklist for each hotel de detailing what the guest room is like, the number of disability rooms, whether they're smoking or non-smoking, um, what the bathroom features are, where the handrails are, where the handrails are in the shower alcove and what other public spaces in the hotel are going to be accessible to you, especially if you want to go to dinner somewhere else. So I also measure the width of the doorway, the front entrance to the room and also the, the doorway into the bathroom because I found that some hotels that are smaller chains, um, the room size is actually quite smaller so the bathroom is a very tight squeeze and you know fair enough to get into the bathroom but then you need to be able to manoeuvre around in the wheelchair to be able to do a turning circle to get in and out. And again you can see that it isn't really possible to get up. Um, these structures but you can wheel around it's a bit of a bumpy wheel al along the grass because it's uneven but it's possible. When I told my friends that we were taking my father to see Amri in Cambodia to visit Angkor Wat they laughed and threw up their hands saying are you crazy? It was difficult we did wheel up to ruins a lot of them have cobblestone paths so it's very bumpy and so the wheelchair wheels would get stuck in the ruts between uh, the cobblestone. So we, we just took our time and planned our day. Well, when you're planning a trip overseas, it's not only uh, managing your disability, it's also uh, managing your expectations. This is a, a, a special photo. Um, my dad loves just sitting and watching, and so we were able to be near the, the river, the Chow Praia River in Bangkok. Um, and this photo is actually great because he's actually standing up. Um, so he was able to hold onto the handrail here to support himself. You know, travel is such, such a rewarding and uplifting thing, and you know, I really do encourage people to, to be inspired to go away. It, it is possible. Well, following the stroke, uh, one of the ways that my dad learnt to um, overcome his communication issues was by drawing as a, as a way to interpret what he's trying to say. And this is a picture of the peak tram. And if you look towards the middle of the tram, there's a window and there's him sitting in his wheelchair inside the peak tram. He was always a bit of a perfectionist before, so I, he does have a lot of attention to detail. This is his wheelchair and this is exactly what his wheelchair is like. Um, and he's drawn him a picture of himself um, in a standing position. Well, in my research, I've looked at over 100 hotels myself and crawled around on my hands and knees, and I've looked at every toilet I could possibly find in Hong Kong. So I have found, and which is a little bit disappointing, some hotels who have done recent renovations, I feel like they're really just, um, they're not, they're doing the bare minimum for the disabled rooms, the disability access rooms. People think of disability um, purely for people who are wheelchair users, but I like to think about accessibility um, not only for people who are wheelchair users or have a, a medical illness or medical condition. What about accessibility for the general population? I mean, let's face it, at the end of the day, none of us are getting any younger. Uh, we can't use we may find ourselves in a situation where we're not able to take a staircase entrance into a hotel or a, a restaurant or, or a shopping mall. You know, we say to him uh, when he has days when he's feeling a little bit down that 
just think of the other people out there who are worse off than you. Um, you've had the opportunity to travel overseas. Um, you've got family members who've stuck by you. Um, there's always somebody else who's in a, a, a more severe situation than you. So you just really need to take every day as it comes and be as positive as you can and, and just use your time wisely.